The following program is produced in association with KCET Los Angeles and is seen statewide on California Public Television. This series is endorsed by the California Teachers Association, the California School Boards Association, and the California Library Association. California's gold is provided to the PBS network statewide through a grant from Wells Fargo Bank. Wells Fargo, coming through for Californians for over 140 years. Hi, I'm Huell Hauser. Welcome to one of the most supposedly barren, bleak, desolate, and godforsaken places on the entire planet. Now, this is a place where nature is in total control. Many days during the summertime, it's over 130 degrees out there. And in the springtime, it's windy. <laughs> this is Death Valley. And just the name itself conjures up all kinds of myths and legends and images in our minds. <laughs> Goodness, it's windy out here. Now, we're here on a rather unusual quest because we have been assured that there's life out here in Death Valley. And if this piques your interest, if you're interested in whether there is life out here, and if there is, what kind of life it is, as always, you're invited to come on along with us as we continue our windy search together for California's living gold. Woo! We were not prepared for the beauty of the place. It was my first trip to Death Valley, and all I'd ever seen or heard about it was that it was dry and barren and very hot. Now, don't get me wrong, there were a lot of rather barren-looking open spaces, and the huge mountains did look rather foreboding. But during our four-day adventure, we discovered Death Valley to be a place full not only of life, but of beauty and constant surprises. It's our newest national park, covering over 3.3 million acres, the largest national park outside of Alaska. And driving around it, you definitely get the feeling of how immense it is. And spending some time there, you learn to appreciate how much it has to offer. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Huell Hauser. Hi, I'm Alan Vivalkenberg. Well, I guess you know why we're here. Mm -hmm. We are in search of life in Death Valley, mm -hmm. which is kind of an unusual place to look for it, isn't it? Right. Well, there's life here. It's very sparse, but it's certainly here. Uh, the name may sound like there isn't, but uh, even some places as extreme as bad water, the lowest place in the Western Hemisphere, you'll find life. The water's not poisonous. It's just bad to drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that isn't a very good start for us. <laughs> We're going to start off in a in a place called Badwater, but you say this is literally the lowest place in the Western Hemisphere. Right, not just the United States, but the entire Western Hemisphere. Uh, we're at the most extreme place, uh, 282 feet below sea level. Wow. Um, it's all salt flat stretch out through here, uh, so the salt makes it tough for life to exist out here. So where is life? Why are we starting here? In this water. What we have, Badwater Pool is actually a permanent spring. Uh -huh. And so there will be life out there. If there's water, there's going to be life. What kind of life? I don't well, see any. You'd have to look close because most of the life is, is uh, aquatic insects or insect larvae. The most unique thing about this particular pool, though, is that there's a, a species of, of snail that's found in this pool of no place else in the world. Really? So are you telling me in a roundabout way that we're going to have to look very closely to find this life, or is it going to be obvious to us? Oh, very closely. Some, some places it'll be obvious, but more often it's going to be, uh, you're going to have to look closely and look at the details to really appreciate life in Death Valley. Well, I'm glad you're with us, because I think probably that's one of the problems with people like us. We go down the highway so quickly we don't stop to see it. Right, right. If you're passing through, you're, you're going to miss most of it. 
Well, now, it's not very hot today, mm -hmm. which is good. We're lucky. It's windy, but it's not hot. <laughs> so if you don't have the heat, you have the wind. Right, one or the other. <laughs> is that part of Death Valley, too, that there's always something you have to kind of overcome? Well, usually. Uh, if you come in the middle of the winter time, it's certainly not going to be hot, uh, but you can be a little chilly. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like it's one thing or the other. Springtime, expect to have wind. Yeah, and we are here in springtime. Yeah. Now this is beautiful looking out here. Well, it's kind of an acquired taste for some people. A lot of people think it's a little bleak, but uh, there's beauty and bleakness too. Wow. Now is this fresh water? Well, it came up fresh water from a spring, but it's passed through all these layers of salt that now the water is actually very, very salty. Oh, look, there's a, there's a whirlwind forming on the water. So there's always something going on. There's always on. something, yes. See, I didn't expect this wind. Yeah, well, uh, anybody coming in the springtime probably should expect it because that's a common thing in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> well, if this is any indication of what's ahead of us, we're in for a great yeah. day. Hold on tight. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Alan, come here a minute. Alan, come here. <laughs> now, what is this all about? It must be a dust devil coming through, picking up the gravel. I noticed it was stinging uh, skin when it was moving through. It's a what? A dust devil. I like like a, a mini uh, tornado moving through here. So that's what just hit us. That's what just hit us. That's why it came through as a body like that. So I was mentioning about on the water out there. It was just moving through the water as well, but a uh, little less, little less oh, painful. You can see it out here. Yeah. Making you can Goodness. see Goodness. And you can see out there the wind picking up the, the salt crystals off the salt flats. That's what that white, uh, looks like white smoke out there. That was almost frightening in a way. <laughs> yeah, I was knocking that kid over. <laughs> Goodness gracious. This is par for the course out here? Well, it happens, yeah. We're, we've got a storm that's, uh, that's moving into the north, and so it's kind of affecting the weather down here. This is, usually the storms pass us by with actual rain. We get uh, so little rain here. We get less than two inches of rain a year here on average, but we get lots of wind. And whatever rain does fall, sometimes that wind can dry it up just like that. So uh, if we have a rainfall, we always hope that the wind doesn't follow it because it's gonna suck the, suck the moisture out of the ground. Wow, just our luck to get hit by a dust devil as soon as we got here. Goodness gracious. Well, after our first stop and our initiation by an honest-to-goodness dust devil, we were off on our expedition to find life in Death Valley. Yeah, look at this, what's coming up here now. This is getting to be some of the best in the park. What is like, this? These are the, the flower petals from the creosote bush, which are blooming just wonderfully right now. In fact, they've been blooming for a while. We're getting not only flower petals, but also the seed pods. These fuzzy things are the seed pods. Look at this. This is beautiful. And everywhere you look, there are these wonderful purple. Yeah, San Verbena. They, uh, they're doing well down in this part of the park. They don't make it fur too much further north than this. But, this but they like the sand. This isn't what you wanted us to stop for. No, it's up on the hillside here. Your, your, your program is California gold, and these flowers we're seeing up here are the desert gold, and they turn the, the, the desert gold when they're in full bloom, as you can see. Now, you can't even see it from back here, hardly, unless you knew what you were looking for. Right. But that whole, that looks like a volcanic mountain. It, it is a volcanic outcrop, and, I, and I'm not sure why, but it seems like on these black outcrops, the flowers come out earlier, perhaps because it warms up earlier. So this whole volcanic outcrop is covered right. with these wonderful yellow flowers. It'd normally be black, and now it's black, with, covered with gold. And we're going to take a closer look. Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, look. See? Yeah. Everywhere you look. Uh, almost every p uh, patch. One, one thing that's different here than a lot of other locations in the deserts is we have space between the flowers. And so uh, when we get up here and see these desert gold, the best way to look at them is through an angle like this because they look a lot thicker. But they're, for out here, these are, this is a thick growth of, of blossoms. And oh, here's one of uh, the favorite wildflowers of people, visitors to Death Valley. Oh. A desert five spot. 
If you look inside of the side of the flower, um, it never opens up more than what we're seeing here. It stays a globe. But you look inside of there, you'll see five red spots. Looks like somebody took a paintbrush and painted them in there. Oh, now look. Now we're getting into it. There they are, right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of our wildflowers here in Death Valley are belly flowers. So most visitors, they come along and they What do you mean these. belly flowers? Well, what they are, are flowers that are so small that you have to get on your belly to appreciate them. So people coming along, driving through Death Valley, they're looking for big displays like this. And uh, if they don't get out and stop to enjoy these things, they're going to miss some of the best flowers. And those are those little belly flowers. So when you stop to look at these big displays, then you finally get to appreciate these little things that uh, normally you'd... Okay, show me a belly here. flower. Well, let's find some here. Well, wait a minute. Here's a belly flower right here. You yeah, almost stepped on it. That's certainly one of them. But that's even bigger than most belly flowers. Uh, I bet if we walk okay, up here... Okay, well, we... wait a minute. Here's a belly flower. Well, it's uh, starting out. You know, a lot of our flowers here, they'll bloom from the, from the moment they come out of the ground. You know, of course, the whole point of flowers is to uh, produce seed. And most of these flowers we see here are, are ephemerals. They're annuals that are here just for a few weeks out of the year. They bloom, the seeds fall to the ground, and then they're dormant. And they can lie there as a seed on the ground for a decade or more before the next conditions come along, the next rainfall amount comes along that uh, can cause these things to sprout. Really? A decade? It can be a decade. You know, I find this so interesting because we are literally, well, right now we're literally walking the down the road, but we're exploring for wildflowers just right on the side of the road. Right. Yeah, often the best wildflowers you find in the deserts are on the roadsides. See, I thought we were going to go on this big exploration, yeah. this big tour of yeah. Death Valley, and actually we've pretty much just stayed yeah, right the to the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the roadsides are nice because uh, often you get extra runoff from rainstorms off the pavement, so it gathers on the roadsides, and it gets stirred up occasionally, so the seeds get planted. It's like being plowed. So you think it'd be a major disturbance, but it kind of helps them. And right over here is a perfect example of, this looks kind of like a dandelion. Yeah, this is a desert dandelion. And here, this part of Death Valley doesn't have a lot of them, but some of the higher areas, you can actually have uh, vast fields of them. And you can go through in the middle of the day and see just all the beauty, but you go in the late afternoon, they've closed up. And some of the other ones, like these, uh, these white ones you see right next door to them, these are just the opposite. Those are evening primrose, and we have vast fields down here that if you go late in the afternoon or early morning, you can see the whole thing. It's just gorgeous. You go midday, they're all wilted and closed up. So, so some turns. of the flowers open during the day and close at night, right. and others open at night and close, close during the day. the day. Right, and they're, they're, of course, going for specific pollinators. So these are, these are going for moths. These are going for uh, bees or, or butterflies. You know a lot about it. I'm glad we hooked <laughs> up with you. <laughs> You're definitely the man. <laughs> okay, the tour continues. We're heading down the road. So we are walking down here to investigate and see what these people are oh my goodness, doing I'm down here. Like what do you think they're doing? Well, I'm not sure. Looks like they might have a desert tortoise. Oh, they're looking at plants. That's it. Oh, it's a lizard. Oh, a lizard. Wow. Oh, look. Boy, they usually don't hold that still. Now, you don't usually see lizards out like this, do you? Well, not, not this one. Oh, look at that great streak of dark on him. Now, were you all out here to look for, for uh, plants, and you ended up finding... Lizards. Lizards. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a friendly one, too. I don't think he has a choice. <laughs> <laughs> friendly or else. Oh, wow. Now, what were you all doing out here? What's your purpose of being here? Uh, we're from Clackamas Community College. We're mm -hmm. on a natural history of Death Valley field trip. Mm -hmm. Looking for flowers? Looking, looking for flowers, looking at the geology, looking at lizards, you know, a little bit of everything. Whatever we can find. Yeah. Well, are you happy at what you've found so far? Oh, yeah, we're having a great time out here. All sorts of, we've, we've been to a lot of five spots out here, which is, I guess, what we came to see out oh, here. Oh, that's what we saw, the one where that you looked down in, inside yeah. there and seen? Yeah. What is this? Oh, I don't know, some kind of caterpillar. You know, this time of year when the flowers are coming out, uh, uh, a lot of the pollinators will use the, the flowers uh, to lay their eggs on, and their, their young often eat specific plants. Um, this one, I'm not sure what it'll be, but we occasionally have mass hatchings of, of uh, sphinx moth caterpillars. It can be this long, and uh -huh. as big around as my thumb. And they, uh, 
The, the adults like to eat the evening primrose, uh, these little white ones over here, and then their young eat them almost exclusively. We'll have mass hatchings where thousands of them will cross the road at a time. You'll have three days where the thousands of these caterpillars are going across and just almost as miraculously as they arrive, they'll disappear. And then they'll appear somewhere else. Because just right here, we've seen the lizard and that little whatever it was crawling <laughs> along there. Uh -huh. So there's really stuff everywhere. Sure, and look how look how heavily used and impacted this area is, yet there's the life. Oh, look! Arizona blister. Arizona oh, blister. stand up and let's take, oh my Yeah, you don't want to touch him. Uh. Yeah, we don't want to like that. <laughs> why, why, uh... Well, because the name blister beetle would sort of imply that, and it's true, beetle, they right? can excrete this, oh! This, uh, <laughs> this liquid that can cause blisters on your skin. Uh, let's put the, let's put the thing down and get him up again. That's, now that's something to see. A blister beetle. It's also something to avoid. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. I, I was reading recently, it, people are commenting they're seeing them digging in the ground, and I was reading somewhere that they uh, they get down and dig in the ground and eat uh, uh, grasshopper larvae. We're, we're a natural history group from Clackamas Community College in Oregon City, Oregon, and it's our spring break, and we have students here that are biology students, geology, and botany come down to Death Valley. We've been doing it for about 20 years. Camp up at Texas Springs. We spend seven days down here. Camped, cook all our meals, get up every morning, fix breakfast, put a lunch together, hit the valley. We either go north, south, east, or west. We're out all day. Now, why Death Valley? Because Death Valley is such an incredible ecological and biological area. You know, there's nowhere, I mean, Oregon's an impressive place, but we don't have geology like this. And the nature of the fact that the desert, when it blooms, like we're seeing now, that's an incredible treat. So the botanists are getting a good time. The geologists are just in awe. I mean, pick any one of these mountain ranges and just, and you start hearing the story about how it happened and the millions and millions of years and the inverted topography and, horizontal everything, I mean, it's, it just gets incredible. And the students get to take it from the textbook and actually see it in the field. Yeah. No more looking at pictures, now we're looking at real things. Yeah. We're heading up on ha Hanapah, gonna go up that alluvial fan as far as we can go and do the same thing. Yeah. Do the same thing, we come down here every year. Well, have fun, I'm glad I ran into y'all. Gosh, learned a lot while I was here. I know you did. Well, we have pulled off to the side of the road to take a look at a lake, yeah. which is certainly the absolute last thing I would have expected to find in Death Valley. Well, it's, that's a good thing that you didn't expect it because it's very temporary. It's only there as long as the, as the rain has fallen and uh, you know it's supplying it. And if, if you come back another month, it'll be gone. Now, is it unusual to find this much water in depends Death Valley? On, depends on the year. I mean, normally this is the most uh, extreme section of Death Valley. We're talking about salt flats. It's uh, the driest part, the least amount of rainfall. Yet, uh, because it's such a big drainage system that the water all flows into here. So uh, this will just be here for a while, and then as soon as the starts to warm up a bit and we stop having rains, it'll be gone. Can we walk down to the water? Sure. I want to see what that water, this is very unusual, and I want to see what this is like. You know, watch your footing down here because there's so much, uh, so much life coming up right now. Boy, this is strange. What is, what is all of this? Well, what is, this is is just salt crystals mixed in with the soil. And much like frost heave, you'd have uh, some places a lot cooler. Uh, the expanding, growing crystals have actually lifted the soil up. Now, is there anything that could grow out here? Is there any life Very little. Here? Um, you'd be surprised. Uh, I have, I've come out even on these salt flats where you think absolutely nothing would be living. And uh, I've seen algae underneath the surface or spiders that grow in some places. And it's kind of mushy out there, so you'll notice when you, <laughs> it'll break through at some point. Most of the salt is just a crust and then it's mud underneath. Yes, but look at this. Look at the reflection out here. This is beautiful. And this will only be here a couple of more weeks. Just just a few weeks, and then then it's out of here. And it's uh, the the salt will actually be wet for quite a long time. The crystals will be wet, and if you walk out there, even in the middle of summer, and sit down on that salt crust, you'll find that it's uh it's going to be uh, wet to the touch. Your pants are going to get wet. Any fish out here at all? Not here. No. Not a one. No. In fact, uh, the, because the water's so temporary, it's. 
But you know, this used to be a much bigger lake. Can I taste this? Oh, you could try. <laughs> Boy. Potent stuff, huh? Real salty. Most of it's just table salt. Uh, but there are other things, so I wouldn't like to consume <laughs> massive amounts. <laughs> what do you mean other things? Well, you know, Epsom salts and things like that. So, uh, you know, they might do a, do a job on your system if you ate too much of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we found some life. We found some life a little bit. Most people wouldn't see this stuff, but there is algae that grows underneath the salt. So this right is algae. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, this is all... Yeah, it's very soft. These crystals are freshly forming there. They're little cubes. If you look looked at this. If you looked at your salt shaker with a, with a magnifying glass, it'd look just like this stuff. Wow. Look and you can see uh, right out in here, there's a large version of these little square crystals that's uh, really expanded. Even that? Has a, that's, that's a salt crystal. That is, that looks like a piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these things will form these very odd, um, oh, almost look like fish scales in some sense. That is beautiful. Can you pick that up? It would break right apart. Really? Mm -hmm. It's as delicate as a, as a little piece of cellophane. Boy, this is, look at this salt. And they're pretty thick pieces. Yeah, of... they're very coarse, and they'll get larger and larger over time. Now, could we take this home and put it in a salt shaker and use uh, it? No, because you can't collect anything in a national park. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, details, details here. <laughs> All we do is stop the car and get out because <laughs> everywhere we go you're pointing stuff out to us uh, there's so much it's even not i mean if you see this much beside the roads what is there that's in the back country that we're missing it's such a huge park well, now we're going to get to see one of these uh one of the most asked about plants in the park it uh certain times of year when there's when there's enough moisture this daughter comes out Daughter. Daughter. Yeah, it's not like, you know, daughter and son, but this is a D-O-D-D-E-R. It's, oh. a, it's a member of the morning glory family, and it's, it's a parasite. Wow. And it actually sprouts from seed and spreads across the ground until it hits a host. And then it goes up into the host, invades that host, and disconnects from the ground and becomes, becomes a, a, a true parasite living off that plant. Look at this one over here. This whole, it's just almost eaten this. Does it just yeah. eat it alive? Yeah, well, it actually uh, puts little suckers down into the flesh of the plant. It gets all of its nutrients from oh, that. Oh, it's wet. It's kind of mm -hmm. sticky like mm -hmm. cotton candy. Right, yeah. It's uh, got a lot of moisture in it. Uh, it does Daughter, D-O-D-D-E-R. D-O-D-D-E-R, yeah. Wow. Strange stuff. And it does have flowers. It will get flowers. And I can see on the ground here dried up fibers that were the ones, the, the original part where it came from the seed. Yeah, this is very wet and mm -hmm. very sticky. Mm -hmm and very strange. And there's some places in Death Valley it's covered big, big patches. Now we are in the middle of a windstorm. We have come up how many feet from the valley floor now? Well, probably close to about 3,000 feet up into Wild Rose Canyon. From where we were we've come up 3,000 right, feet right. and it must be at least 40 degrees here. It's chilly. Well certainly with the, uh, the wind chill factor which you normally don't think of having in Death Valley but We've got it here. And this is something else you don't normally think of in Death Valley. Right. This is what you brought us up here to see. Right, you're seeing a very special flower here. This is the Panama Daisy. And this is the only place in the world to see this particular plant. The Panama Daisy. Right, right. we're in the Panama Mountains here. And uh, this plant is found just in Wild Rose Canyon, a few other canyons about this elevation. Well, they're kind of tucked away in this little canyon here. Not many people would know they were here. Right, a lot of people drive right by them and, and miss them. Uh, this canyon that is, is probably the prime location for them in the world. In fact, these plants are limited to just this canyon, like I say, a couple other locations over here. Really? And they seem to like a certain soil type, so even in the canyon, they're limited where they're at. Now we have come 3,000 feet higher. We're now at... We're about 6,000 foot elevation right now. Now this is not the Death Valley <laughs> that yeah. uh, I don't think most people even know exist. We're up here, it's cold. Mm -hmm. We've got, uh, what kind of trees well, here? Well, mostly pinyon pines and junipers. Um, not real big trees, but certainly a pretty thick woodland up here. And here we are, springtime in Death Valley, mm -hmm. and we have, honest to goodness, snow. Right, it was 90 degrees in the valley yesterday, and today we're up in the snow. This is, 
Now, see, this is really surprising to me. Well, you know, one thing about the mountains here is they're they're sort of like a little island of life, isolated by other mount from other mountains by all this desert. Uh huh. It's like a a, a sea of desert uh, around a, a a mountain island, Sky Island. So part of Death Valley is this. Right. Is the right. snow. Is the snow, and it's an important part too. And a lot, of the, a lot of the plants and animals up here, they're really adapted for this, this type of environment. They, if you took them out of here, took them down to where it's warm and lower part of Death Valley, wouldn't survive. See, I don't think most of us know this, do we? <laughs> no, I don't think so. And it's usually a surprise for people, too, when they come here and there's snow in Death Valley when it's hot down below. To end our Death Valley adventure, we headed back down to the valley floor to visit a place Alan said we just had to see. Now this is the place that you have been itching to bring us right. for the past two days, right? Yeah, we're here at Salt Creek, which is a, a year-round flowing stream in Death Valley. It's a, you know, Death Valley was once a big lake. It hasn't always been the same. There was a lake here that was a good 600 feet deep at one point. Really? And uh, Right where we're standing. Right where we're standing. We're sort of in the northern end of it. The water has disappeared, of course. It's dried up and become Death Valley but uh, there's been pockets of water left behind where permanent water sources are at. And in those water sources, there is a little species of fish, a species of pupfish that are found in this particular creek and no place else in the entire world. In the entire world. Right, right. They're, they're found here. They're, they have to deal with a lot of hardships while they're here, of course, but uh, they can survive. They've lasted all those years since the Ice Age. How many years ago were they here? Well, the lake was here as recently as 10,000 years ago at its deepest point. So they probably, their ancestors lived along the shore, the shallow shores of this lake. And uh, since they've been isolated here, it's much like being on an island, an island of wet surrounded by a sea of dryness. And in this case, these fish have evolved because of their isolation into a separate species. Now, what is the species we're looking at here? Well, we have the Salt Creek pupfish, and they're, uh, they're very small but they're well adapted to this very salty water. And some of this water can be uh, five times saltier than the ocean, and they can survive in that. Wow. You know, I've, in, in our whole journey uh, the last couple of days, I never really asked you how difficult it really is mm. for anything to survive out here. Right. Well, it is Death Valley, after all, so it's very difficult. And these uh, animals and plants out here, they have, of course, the dryness to deal with, the extreme temperatures to deal with, the salt to deal with, uh, and the, the lack of food. You know, the life is sparse here. It's here, but it's sparse. And so the food sources are, are far and few between. Well, you've shown us a lot of interesting examples of life. One thing we haven't touched on are the interesting people yeah. who have lived out here in the past and who still live here today. But that's another whole story, right? <laughs> They're survivors too, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. We started off on our journey to prove that there is life in Death Valley. And I think we not only found that to be true, but we also, I remember what you said at the very beginning, which was the life is here but it's not necessarily the kind that just runs up and hits you in the face. You gotta look for it. Yeah, you have to search it out because it's far apart. That's the way they survive, is not competing too much with each other. And it's sometimes very well hidden and very minute. Right, right. You, uh, like you say, it doesn't jump up and bite you unless, of course, it's a sidewinder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness we didn't find any of those. So there it is, life in Death Valley. We came in search of it and we found it, and it's a beautiful place. We have had an absolutely wonderful time and learned a lot about this place called Death Valley that is absolutely filled with life. California's gold is provided to the PBS network statewide through a grant from Wells Fargo Bank. Wells Fargo coming through for Californians for over 140 years. Hi, this is Huell Hauser, and if you enjoyed our springtime visit to Death Valley National Park and would like to see it again or share it with your family and friends, it's available on video cassette. Just call 1-800-266-KPBS and we'll send it to you right away.